Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to New Zor Education. Um, I would like to um, talk today about electromagnetic field created by a moving charge, moving particle which is charge, like a proton or electron, for example. So it's magnetism of moving charge. That's that's what this lecture is about. Now, um, in the same chapter of this course, um, we were talking about magnetic field created by <coughs> by a current. So if you have some kind of a very long wire with certain current running in it in amperes, uh, the moving uh, electrons create a magnetic field which has the circular magnetic field lines. So the uh, magnetic field intensity vector is tangential tangential to these circles. Well, it's supposed to be different direction, this direction. So it's basically circles um, around the wire. So every circle, every magnetic line makes a circle in the plane which is perpendicular to the uh, wire and uh, the center of this circle is in the plane uh, center in the where, where the wire actually is going through all these planes and we have come up with a formula about intensity of the field uh, mu i divided by 2 pi r where I is the electric current, the amperes. Um, R is the distance from the wire. So basically, if you have a wire and you have this concentric circles of magnetic field lines, so around the same line, the magnetic uh, uh, field intensity is the same. It depends on the distance from the wire, basically. And mu is a uh, uh, permeability constant for particular media where we are. In case of uh, the vacuum, it's mu with index zero usually is used. Um, so that's basically how well magnetic field penetrates the media. And vacuum is a media as well. Okay, so we, we, com we came up with this formula kind of logically and obviously experimentally as, as, as well. Um, and what I would like to do is to do something similar to come up with some kind of a meaningful formula in case not a wire where electrons are moving uh, all the time with certain constant speed. Uh, but if you have one particular point charge basically moving, in theory it's supposed to be creating a magnetic field as well, right? Because if uh, many electrons uh, moving in one direction create magnetic field, one electron should actually do the same. question is what exactly kind of magnetic field, what's intensity of this magnetic field is created by a moving um, particle. Okay, so let's just think about this and uh, again we will try to come up with certain formula using logic and then obviously it be, I, I will mention that it's uh, supported by experiment. Uh, and here it is. So let's consider we have an observer at the origin of coordinates and somewhere there is a moving uh, electrically charged particle. So there is a um, electric charge, coulombs, and there is some kind of a velocity vector, V. Now, my question is what exactly this observer observes as far as magnetic field at this particular point. So let's say this is vector r which points to 
the um, to the particle charged particle and obviously it's changing V is constant that's easier for us right now so the particle is moving with a constant speed but its position vector which points to a position is obviously the um, variable depending on the time and uh, well actually vector is equal to d r dt because speed is the first derivative of the position you remember that from the mechanics and this is the vector actually which means on every component x component y component and z component is exactly like this okay so let us just think about what now in this particular case um, we came up with what exactly uh, the dependency between uh, the um, electric charge which is moving along the wire and uh, magnetic field intensity but obviously it should depend on the intensity of the current itself which is amperage right um, the greater it is the more electrons actually are going through the uh, the, uh, the higher the uh, magnetic field intensity is supposed to be that's kind of natural now the fact that it's reversely in inversely proportional to the distance is also kind of understandable because it's a s uh, it, the magnetic field actually is like a cylinder right so the farther it is obviously the weaker magnetic field is supposed to be why is it proportional to the first degree of r not the second degree well um, it's uh, kind of obvious because every little detail of this particular um, wire creates magnetic field very narrow it's supposed to be kind of symmetrical so it's a cylindrical surface and if it's a cylindrical surface uh, around the wire I mean one particular um, well, layer of magnetic field if you wish then um, the energy is distributed uh, towards the whole cylinder and the greater the radius is um, basically the greater area is because this is infinite or very long time very long uh, lengths but as far as the area area where energy is distributed is distributed proportionally to the uh, circumference of this um, circle which is 2 pi r we will do basically the same thing here but instead of infinite line we have just a point now I in case of infinite line you know, magnetic field um, the same layer of magnetic field which means the same um, parts of magnetic field which have exactly the same magnitude of um, intensity because all these are of the same magnetic field intensity now here magnetic field intensity will be spherical obviously around the point so it's supposed to be an inversely proportional to the area of the sphere in this case right so that should be in denominator now that's kind of understandable what also is understandable well it's obviously understandable that it should be proportional to uh, charge itself the greater the charge well if you double the charge it's supposed to double the magnetic field it's also kind of natural um, what else now magnetic field is created by movements of the charge right in this case so I would not have any kind of you know problem to say that it's supposed to be proportional to V yes sometimes you might consider that maybe it's supposed to be like V square or V cube or something like this but it's not really very kind of counterintuitive to consider it's proportional to V and obviously experiments support it what else 
And then there is a very important thing which is not as obvious, quite frankly, and I would like to talk about a little bit longer. <laughs> Let's consider you have two different um, situations. This is one, and this is another. The same speed, the same Q, but position is here. What's the difference between these two things? Well, let me go to analogy. If you are on the, on the Earth's surface and the Sun is here, it emits certain amount of heat, which is, by the way, electromagnetic uh, uh, waves as well. And now you have sun here, the same sun, and obviously the distance, this is the, uh, around the noon, let's say, and this is in the evening. The distance to the sun is basically the same, there is no difference. But the angle it falls on Earth is different. And obviously this is much hotter than this one. Why? Well, explanation is actually very simple. Well, consider if this is the sun, and this is a very narrow um, amount of heat which goes here. It falls from A to B, okay, perpendicularly. Now here, the same, um, the same amount of heat goes at the angle. So let me go into a bigger picture. This is A, this is B, and this is an angle. So what goes to the same segment of AB? This is a uh, right angle. And this is, let's say, alpha here. So this is alpha here, right? So the same, and this is alpha, so the same amount of heat which comes from the sun now goes against longer area. So if this is distance d, so this is distance d, this is distance d, then this would be d divided by sine of alpha, right? So, if this is a greater area onto which the same amount of heat falls, well, that means that the intensity of the energy which is falling on the unit area, which is basically intensity of the heat we feel, would be, by this factor, less. So the area is greater, so the intensity should be less. So that's why if certain amount of uh, energy or whatever is here, here it will be E times sine of alpha, where alpha is this angle at which we see. Exactly the same thing happens in this case. Amount of magnetic field energy which comes from here. Well, in case of magnetic field energy, it's called actually a magnetic field flux. So the same, basically, amount of magnetism comes from this and from this. Now, we have here some kind of a device. Well, device is... what is the device? I don't know, but it, there is some kind of an area which feels magnetic, uh, magnetic field. And if the um, uh, if the angle is less, then the amount of uh, magnetism falling onto these sensitive devices which we are using to measure magnetism would be proportionally smaller. And what is the coefficient of proportionality? The same sign. 
Now, what is this sign? It's a sign basically between angle of between what and what? Between R and V or V and R, whatever. It's good to be more traditional. So, by the way, it's supposed to be lowercase r. So, lowercase r is the length, and the lowercase r with an arrow on the top is a vector. Okay, so basically, this is the formula we are looking for. Now, um, in addition to this, I obviously should put some kind of uh, permeability coefficient and the uh, experiment show it's exactly the same permeability because it's a, it's a property of the space, not property of the charges or, or device which we are using to measure it. And that would be my intensity of the magnetic field. Now, all we need now is just a little bit of mass to come up with something which is more traditional. Now, <coughs> let's just think about what is V times sine of the angle between V and R. Well, if you remember the vector product of uh, two vectors is as far as the magnitude, it's a vector, but it's far, as far as the magnitude is what? The magnitude of this is equal to V times R times sine of the angle between V and R, right? That's basically the magnitude of vector product, and direction is perpendicular to both of these. Well, again, if you remember the um, direction of the magnetic field intensity is always uh, perpendicular to um, magnetic field lines. Now, what is magnetic field lines here? In this case, if it's moving this way, it's at this at every moment is something like this, and, thi and at this particular point, it should be perpendicular to both of them, which means it goes into the into the board, into the my whiteboard, right? So it's perpendicular, which is good. Now, as far as this formula is concerned, it's almost like this, except we have R. So what we can do instead of this, we can put V, vector V, times um, vector product uh, with R divided by R. So this will be a unit vector. So that would be V, the magnitude of this, times magnitude of this vector, which is 1, times the sine, and the sine would be the one which we, which we actually need. So, in other words, it can be mu Q vector product with r divided by 4 pi r cube. Sometimes, instead of this, they put square here, and instead of arrow here, they put this sign. Ampersand, I think it's called. Which means this is a unit vector in the same direction as the R vector is. Well, it's just a different... Um, oh, sorry, I forgot the... So this is the vector product of V and a unit vector of R. So this is the same thing, basically, and uh, yet another way you can put it's mu Q 
Now, what is V? V is actually derivative of R. So you can put R, I use R uh, prime, which is also a vector, times R. Divided by 4 pi R cube. So there are many wa wa ways of basically expressing this formula, but it's exactly the same formula. And uh, again, m my probably a little bit more uh, difficult part was to explain why we need this type of a sine of this angle and uh, in addition to um, whatever was before with uh, Q and uh, V and the sine that was only the magnitude in the vector form it shows also a direction of the intensity vector it's perpendicular to direction to the charge and the vector of speed. So in this particular case, as I was saying, it's just perpendicularly to, to both these vectors, which is go, go, going into the board. Um, now, depending on the charge, positive or negative, it will be either into the board or out of the board into space. So basically, it all depends. And there are some rules which we talked about this. If charge goes this way, uh, and magnetic lines, mag magnetic field uh, lines are that way, then the, the intensity, magnetic field intensity would be perpendicular to, to this and that. Um, so that's not really as important right now. I mean, it's important for certain practical tasks, but my purpose was just to explain why we have something like this, why we have a formula which looks not exactly as natural as something, um, let's say, the gravitation law where we had mass times mass times uh, square distance that's kind of with some kind of a coefficient um, so that was kind of obvious again square because it's the gravitation energy is distributed throughout the whole sphere same thing as uh, Coulomb's law Q1, Q2, divided by R squared with some kind of coefficient to gain. Well, again, it's kind of 4 pi, and then it was uh, epsilon here. It doesn't really matter how we express this constant with this um, permittivity. Uh, th the matter is, it's always proportional to two kind of things, and uh, inversely proportional to uh, either radius square now, if it's a line with, uh, I was saying, uh, it was current, it would be inversely proportional to radius because we are talking about cylinder of magnetic field uh, lines in the same radius. So in any case, it's all kind of natural. This doesn't really look as natural from the first glance, at least. But again, if you think about it, it's just a convenient representation of both the magnitude and direction of the intensity vector. And that's all about magnetism of moving electric charge. Okay, so uh, I suggest you to um, look at the Unizor at Physics 14, uh, 14th course um, and read the notes for this lecture. It's within the electromagnetism part of the course where we're talking about magnetism of electric current. That's it. Thank you very much and good luck.